Um, this first chapter, this first unit, is on logic and reasoning. It's a lot of notation. Nothing I show you is going to be dramatically tough. And in fact, you can use the shortcut symbols that I'm going to be showing you as shorthand when you're doing notes in university. You'll find during your first year of university that there's kind of an understood symbology or shorthand. You'll notice all of us have symbols for with and 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 therefore and belongs to and a lot of it comes out of set theory. So some of this is kind of useful, but this is also logic and reasoning. It's how to argue. You guys are teenagers, you love to argue. You guys are teenagers, you suck at it. You're terrible at it. So what we're going to try and talk about is how we know whether a statement is true, how we know whether a statement is false. Much of it will be common sense, but we're going to try and solidify it onto a firm mathematical background. So you want to be open to page one. <clears throat> Just saying. So it says, in this unit, we will explore the subject of set theory in the mathematical study of collections of objects. Sounds boring. Actually, it's not. It just, it's just going to start out dry, but we're going to use it later on during the year to get more interesting. We're going to be introduced to the connecting words and and or and not. You may think, Sterling, you know what they mean in English. I'm telling you they might mean something different from what you think in math and their counterparts in set theory. We're going to look at Venn diagrams. I hear uh, Seth Meyers on The Late Show is doing a regular Venn diagram. Uh, th I'll try and find a few of those as comedy bits as well, if I can. And uh, other concepts like empty set, disjoint set, subsets, and the universal set. So statements. In mathematics, we deal with statements. A statement is a sentence that has a truth value. It's either true or false. What would be a good abbreviation to use for the word true for the rest of this unit? T. Capital T. What would be a good abbreviation to use for the word false? Okay. But already, I hope you're hearing we just invented computers. Instead of true or false, how about on or off? And now we have the whole start of what's called binary mathematics for how computers work. We can take a statement in English and we can assign it a one or a zero. One is true, zero is false, and that can move a mechanical switch in a computer to on or off. And holy smokes, there's your iPod. Well, after a few generations of thinking. A sentence that may be judged true by one person, but may be false by another, is not considered a statement, it's an opinion. So consider the following. The city of Vancouver is in the province of British Columbia. This is a statement, and it's true. So we would say that's a fact. City of Vancouver is on planet Mars. This is still a statement, and what's its truth value? False. But there's nothing wrong with making that statement. Mathematically, it's perfectly valid to say that, and you would say if we were doing binary math as an equation, the answer was zero. False. Vancouver is the best place in the world to live. That's not a statement. It's an opinion. How do you get to Vancouver? That's a question. So determine whether each of the following is a statement. And if it's a statement, list its truth value, true or false. <laughs> number one, A, says this. The number four is a prime number. First of all, is that a statement or is that an opinion? OK, that's a statement. What's its truth value? Let's put a big F there. Weren't we supposed to say whether or not it was a statement? We did because we put a truth value. If it's not a statement, we can't put a truth value. B, driving in a car is the best mode of transportation. Is that a statement? So I'm not going to put a truth value. I'm just going to write not a statement. And later on in this unit or the next, you'll learn the abbreviation for not a. Because no one would write out those two common words. There's got to be a symbol for that. There is. For those of you who are wondering, that's a statement. That's not a statement. It's a horizontal bar above everything means not. But we'll get there in the notes later. If you double an odd integer, then you get an even number, even integer. Is that a statement? 
Yes, it's a very classic statement. It's an if-then. Can you see it? Anybody here do any programming? Okay, so when you, if you ever take a programming course, one of the very first things you'll learn how to do in any programming language is how to do an if-then statement, a conditional statement. So uh, what's its truth value? If you double an odd integer, then you get an even integer. Is that true or false? And what I should really say is, is that always true or false? Let's see. Give me an example of an even, in, of an odd integer. Okay, double it, what do you get? Two. So it works for that. What else might I check for an odd integer? A negative, because integers are negative. Negative three, double it. Stop clicking. What do you get? Six, even, okay. Uh, what about zero? Zero is not an odd number, so that doesn't apply here. I don't need to worry about that. What about two? Two is not an odd integer, so it doesn't apply to that first statement. Are there any exceptions? Generally, if it's a numerical statement, I check positives, I check negatives, I check ones, and I check zeros, because that's most likely where some of the weird exceptions might be. I think we can safely say true. We haven't proved it, but I'm pretty sure it is. Next page. <coughs> The negation of a statement with the word not. So the negation of a statement, yeah, we've turned the page, we're all there now, is the exact, yep. Yeah. Uh, the question before, what if you had a decimal? Integers by definition are whole numbers plus or minus, no decimals and fractions. So negative two thirds is not an integer. That's why, by the way, you know what? I would even underline that we'll be talking about number sets later on as well. And you'll learn, OK, what's a whole number again? You did this in Math 10 technically, but it's been a while. What's a natural number again? What's a rational number again? And uh, fractions, decimals are not integers, even if they have a negative in front of them, not integers. Great question. I'm glad you asked. Still a good question. So the negation of a statement. The negation of a statement is the exact opposite of a statement. Don't overcomplicate it <coughs> by trying to parse it into more specific than that. The word not is often used to form the negation. So one way to write the negation of the statement, the city of Vancouver is in the province of Alberta, is to say the city of Vancouver is not in the province of Alberta. One of those statements will be true. One of those statements will be false. Oh, in this case, the original statement is false. The negation is true. And they are opposites of each other. In every case where the original <coughs> statement is true, the negation must be false. In every case where the original statement is false, the negation must be true. You're hearing we could represent that mathematically with positives and negatives. Again, how we built up computers mathematically. So it would not be correct to say that the negation of the above statement is uh, the city of Vancouver is in the province of Saskatchewan. Both this statement and the original are false. <coughs> so if you're not sure whether you have a negation, check the truth value of each statement. If they're both the same, that's impossible. You've done something wonky. Something, a statement is either true, Brandon, or it's false, Brandon. It can't be both. A negation in bold font must always have the opposite truth value to the original statement. So a student made the following false statement. You know what? Let's even put an F there for false. All triangles are isosceles. Now there's some vocabulary here, and this is going to sound stupidly obvious, I hope. What's a triangle? Three sides. What's an isosceles triangle? It's been a while, I know. All sides, All sides are the same, has a special name. That's a special type of isosceles triangle, but that's not usually what people mean when they talk <laughs> about isosceles triangle. So an isosceles triangle as a picture
Looks like that. You guys did some geometry last year, right? Oh, come on, that's gotta be a little... If you were in the Foundations 11, if you came over from the pre-calc, you haven't seen geometry for a while. Isosceles means at least two sides the same. So, is it true that every single triangle has at least two sides the same? Convince me. And this is gonna bring us to one of our logic rules. Proving something true, very difficult. But to prove something false, all you need is one counterexample. That's terrible. Let's exaggerate it. Sure, a right angle triangle. There, there's a counterexample. So that's how we know it's false. What would the negation of all triangles are isosceles be? A, all triangles are not isosceles. B, not all triangles are isosceles. C, all triangles are scalene or equilateral. Don't overcomplicate it trying to parse the logic. Just parse the English. What would the negation of all <laughs> triangles are isosceles be? No. A. This is why I said don't, don't try and put the truth value. Don't try and make a true statement. Look. Just add the word not in front of the condition. All triangles are not isosceles. Oh, and by the way, that is true. All triangles are not. Some are. So that also passes the one must be false, the other must be true. Why isn't B not all triangles are isosceles? Let me double check. You know what? Duick is wrong. It is B. Shoot. Just had a sneaking, all triangles are isosceles, not all triangles are isosceles. I put the not in front. That's the easy way. When in doubt, put the not in front of the statement and that will negate it. Sorry guys, told you I haven't taught this for a while. So let's fix that brilliant mistake, Sterling, by doing example three. It says, write the negations of the following statements. <laughs> it's 20 degrees outside. Who gets the chocolate? Absolutely. What would the negation be of 3A? It is not 20 degrees outside. The other way to think about a negation when you pull back and look at both statements, it either is or it isn't. There can't be any other possibilities. If there are some other possibilities, you didn't nail the negation. <coughs> How about B? It is not Saturday today. What would the negation of that be? It is. it is. Or if you really want to tick me off, you could say it is not not Saturday. No, let's just go with, we're not going to go double knots or anything stupid like that. It is Saturday today. By the way, if I did say not, not, what does that really mean? What's a negative times a negative? You're starting to see again how we could link some basic math concepts to logic and reasoning when we're designing circuit boards and computers and things. Yes, Giancarlo. Did I get your name right? I said, did, yeah, I said Giancarlo. Yeah, okay. Ah, tired. Go ahead. If you were to say no, Say that again? No, it, it is Saturday. Um, I'm going to say for now, with the negation, let's make sure we include the word not, the actual word somewhere. Then our answers all kind of look the same. Because, I mean, the English language, we've got all sorts of ways to parse it. I've got to think about yours, because again, it's been a while since I've taught this. But this leads us to the next segue compound statements. Okay? Tie. A compound statement is a statement that's formed by combining two or more statements. Pretty obvious, because that's what <laughs> compound means in science as well. Let me get, oh, and the words and or or are often used. Here's an example. 
it is 20 degrees outside and it is not Saturday today? Or it is 20 degrees outside or it is not Saturday today? Those are compound statements and they have different meanings. They have different meanings. The second one might be true right now. I think it is above 20 degrees, at least in the courtyard. And for an or to be true, only half of it has to be true, one or the other. Both can be true as well. For an and to be true, both have to be true. Next page. So, forming a compound using the word and. We're getting theoretical here, I know. Oh, by the way, if you see something in bold face when you're studying in bold font, probably something you really need to know. So a conjunction of two statements can be formed by using the word and. I'm wearing black and blue. However, it's true only if both of the original statements are true. If one of the original statements is not true, then it's false. <coughs> one way to think about that if we're talking about circuits is to imagine a water pipe. Don't write this down, just watch. A big pipe of water with two valves like that that can open or close. If I open this valve, will water flow? If I open this valve, will water flow? This is a good example, visual example, of what the word and means in math. For water to float, for a circuit to float, for electricity to go down that particular circuit, both valves, both sides of the statement must be true. So when I think of the word and, I actually imagine a pipe with two little gates and both gates have to be open or water is not flowing. I don't know if that helps or hurts, but that's kind of how I was taught. So the conjunction of blue is a color with ice is solid is the statement blue is a color and ice is solid. Is blue a color? Yes. Is ice solid? Yes. Then that is true because both statements are true. The conjunction of, and this is silly, wet is a color with ice is solid. You get the statement, what is a color and ice is solid? Is that a true statement? Nope, it both must be true, and since one is not true, it's false. The conjunction of wet is a color with ice is a liquid is the statement wet is a color and ice is a liquid. Is that true? Both sides aren't true. And if you go back to my pipe analogy, this would be two closed valves. This would be one open valve and one closed valve. For water to flow, both valves have to be switched open. What about with the word or? In everyday English, we use the word or in two different ways, unfortunately. Here is the first way. Uh, in order for Drew to have the necessary prerequisites to go on to college next term, he needs to pass in grade 12 physics or a pass in grade 12 chemistry. Does, looking at that statement, does he need both in order to graduate? No. Can he have both still? Okay, this is the difference between or. In English, when I say, you know what, Dominic, you can have a Kit Kat or a Smarties, you will never come back to me and say, I want both. In math, when I say you can have a Kit Kat, statement one can be true, Statement two can be true. Both can also be true for or. Got to be a little fussy. Difference between the English language. So this is an example in part A of what we call the inclusive or. Because in this statement, it's still true if you have one or the other or both. If he passes chem, he's going to college. If he passes physics, he's going to college. If he passes both, he's going to college. See that? Uh, what about this here? Uh, John asked Helen how she was getting to school tomorrow, and she replied, ah, I'll take the bus or drive myself. Can both of those be true at the same time? Okay. This is an example of what we call exclusive or. If any of you do programming, 
we program it with that command, XOR, that's exclusive OR. If I ever use that in programming, the statement, if both are true, will come back false. Because you could have one or the other, but not both. In math, we always mean the inclusive version. We always use the inclusive, we mean the inclusive version. So in math, we're always going to say, if I say the word or, phone put away please, right? Of course. If I say the word or, it means one or the other or both. And that's a little confusing. In other words, <laughs> in math, I would not parse that particular sentence. I would phrase it differently because the word or there doesn't work the way I want it to work. How would you phrase it? Oh, that's uh, down the pipe. All right, new word. The disjunction of two statements is formed by placing the word or between them. We have a conjunction and and a disjunction or. Now, a disjunction is true if any of the following happens. The first statement is true, the second statement is true, or, using that word, the third statement is true. You okay, Rach? Good, Madison? Mc uh, Madison, what did I say? Good God. Mackenzie, why'd Madison go? Yeah. You said the third statement instead of both statements. All, all, well, sorry, all three. Uh, sorry, that one there. I meant the third statement there. Yeah, you're right, that was badly said. You know what, as a pipe, this is how I visualize it. If I go back to my flowing water, the word or means this. And you have a valve here or here, and you want the water to flow this way. Water can get through to the other side down here if I open that valve or if I open that valve <laughs> or if I open both. And in terms of a computer circuit, that's the type of circuit we will be talking about as well. Good, Mackenzie? Okay. So, a disjunction is only false if both statements are false. If any one or both are true, its value is T, true. So far so good? A little theoretical? I know. Nearly done. Consider the following statement. Here it is. <laughs> Let's use and and or. So, I've enrolled a pair of dice and, you know what, for now in our notes, let's underline the word and. The sum of the two numbers was an odd number or a prime number. Okay, so this means that the sum was either an odd number. Uh, as an example, he rolled a three and a four. Add those together, you get an odd number. Or the sum was a prime number. What are some prime numbers? Can you give me a prime number that I can form by adding two die together? Seven? Oh, huh. also a three and a four. You know what? How about a two and a three, because five is prime. <laughs> or he could have rolled one that was both. Three and four is an example of a possible outcome that is both <coughs> some that's odd and some that's prime. So this is an example of the inclusive use of or in mathematics. Is that okay, Matt? Let's do a few examples. Okay. Consider the natural numbers now. Some symbols. Our abbreviation for natural number is going to be a capital N. And the natural numbers are 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. 
how high does this particular statement want me to go? Read. Up to, including 15 or below 15? Okay, if they hadn't said or equal to, then it would be 14, okay. So what's missing from the natural numbers? Decimals and zero. Uh, I always tell people, natural, uh, I always think numbers that appear in nature like trees that you can count. Hey, there's one tree. Hey, there's five trees. Hey, there's 6.3 trees. Does that make sense? No. Hey, there's no trees. Does that make sense? So zero and decimals. Hey, there's negative five trees. Natural numbers appear in nature. They're, they're often called counting numbers. When I used to teach math, I called them Sesame Street numbers because Sesame Street was brought to you by the number three or the number seven. Sesame Street was never brought to you by the number 6.5. Sesame Street was never brought to you by the number negative six. I'm not sure, I never recall seeing Sesame Street brought to you by the number zero. Maybe they have finally put that in. And I know I never saw Sesame Street as brought to you by the number pi. Okay, so you ready? So we're talking about the numbers from one to 15, the natural numbers from one to 15 inclusive. List the numbers that satisfy each of the following conditions. X is odd. Rattle them off. What are they? And we'll find shorter ways to write this eventually. But for now, <laughs> Hannah, we're just going to list them. What are the numbers in that group that I've drawn there that satisfy a true statement to this condition, this statement, that are true with this statement? One, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen. You're also noticing that we're talking about a sec set. We use the squiggly curly brackets. Okay. Jordan, can you read B to me? Okay, I'll change colors. What makes that statement true? What are the prime numbers that are also natural numbers? One. One is not prime. One is defined as not prime. Two is. Two is the only even prime number. Next. Three. Yep. Yep. Nine? No. Nine. Yeah, get that with my German student? Yeah. No? Zing! <sighs> Eleven? Yep. Thirteen? Mm -hmm. By the way, Put your pencils down. Nothing to do with uh, what I'm showing you. There's something called the twin prime conjecture. Twin primes are prime numbers that are only one apart, like 11 skip 13. Like, uh, nope, 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 nope. Uh, 41 skip 43. And the qu twin prime conjecture, Mac, asks this. We have noticed that as you get bigger, the twin primes don't appear as often. And so the question was, hey, do they eventually peter out and stop totally? Or when you get into the billion, 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 billions, can you still find twin primes, primes that are one apart? And I'll be playing you a music video showing you the answer to that in a little bit. Uh, C, x is odd and x is prime. Which numbers satisfy that group? Rattle them off. Three? Five. Seven. Eleven. Thirteen. Okay. What about X is odd? or x is prime. That brings that in, right? Mm -hmm. That brings the 2 in, because 2 is prime. It's not odd, but it's prime. 
uh, that brings the 3, the 5, the 7, the 11, brings in the, oh, I missed the 9, it brings in the 9, it brings in the 11, it brings in the 13, oh, it brings back the 15, doesn't it? Because every one of those numbers is either odd or prime or both, most or both. Uh, how about E, X is a factor of uh, 3 or 5 or 7. From that list, from N, which of those numbers are factors of either 3 or 5 or 7? What this means is you can look at each situation individually, and as long as it's a factor of any one of those three, it's in our list. So let's start with three. What are three's factors? What goes into three evenly? It's meant to be really obvious. Okay, so one and three are on this list. What are the factors of five? Got it? Five. One and five, already mentioned. I'm not going to write one twice. What are the factors of seven? Got it? And it was one and seven, right? I want to make sure we get them all. Okay. How does that compare with F when I say X is a factor of three and five and seven? Ah. That's the only thing that appears in everything. What about x is a multiple of 3 or 5 or 7? Now, if it's a multiple, that means 3 or 5 or 7 goes into it. 3 goes into 3. What else? 5 goes into 5. 7 goes into 7. 9? Or is that a German saying? No. <laughs> 9? What was that? What about six? Ah. Have they mentioned anything about odd numbers only in G? No. And did they mention anything about odd numbers in our initial condition? So you know what? We can say, hey, three go oh, use the same color, Mr. Duick. Three goes into six evenly. Now we better be a bit more careful. Oh, definitely seven. What about eight? What about nine? Sure. What about 10? Yep. What about 11? 12? Yep. Oh yeah, three goes in. 13? No. 14? Yes. 15? Yes. Okay. And let's compare that with the very, very last one. X is a multiple of 3 and 5 and 7. What numbers from 1 to 15 do 3 and 5 and 7 all go into at the same time? It's a trick question. Nine. How do I write that? So we call this the empty set. <laughs> and traditionally, it's two brackets. Now, zero is a number, zero with a line, th a slash sideways. That's meant to say not zero and nothing else, empty set, nothing works. We'll actually do that more formally in the notes later on. Here we go. Some logic, some reasoning, some terminology. What's your homework? I think you can try number one. One of the things I really like about this book is the answers are at the end of each exercise instead of in the back of the book. So all you got to do to check if you're doing it right is turn a couple of pages. And I've learned kids are much more likely to look, uh, check the answers if it's a couple of pages. I have a teacher's solution manual showing all my steps. I may in a few days order a couple of student solution manuals and just leave them around. They're handwritten solution manuals. And if you're stuck, feel free to ask me. Anyways, number one. 
Um, I'm going to go to, except where it says write the negation of each statement, I'm going to say, how about do the negation of A, C, E, and G. Don't do eight negations. Do four of them. Yeah. The odd questions, except it's not odd because they're letters, but you know what I mean. OK. Uh, give me your pen. I haven't looked at all these yet. Three, sure, three is good. And then five is good. I'll skip, sorry, four is, four, I'm sorry. I circled four, I said five. Four is good, I was gonna say skip five. Six is good. Seven is good. Seven is called a truth table, except don't write out true or false. What are we going to use the whole time for true? Capital T. What are we going to use for false? And don't be an idiot on a test and try and do this one. I've seen that before. I'll just mark it wrong. What, you guys thought you were the first ones to think of that? No. What do you think it is, Mr. Duick? And then eight and nine. Okay. Yep. You can probably get this done in class if you hustle. <laughs> I think I, yeah, six all. Okay. 